This episode is sponsored by Brilliant. SpaceX Starship updates, SpaceX reaches pressure goal and NASA Artemis program possibly delayed. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? And before we get started with today's episode, there is an announcement I want to get out there ASAP. I will be traveling to Cape Canaveral from February 28th until March 4th. Besides attending the CRS-20 launch, there is a very good chance you might see me all over the place at Kennedy Space Center and I am planning a community meetup. I am inviting you to meet me on February 29th at Shilu's Steak and Seafood starting at 5.30 p.m. It's a beautiful restaurant with a view overlooking the Kennedy Space Center Vehicle Assembly Building and I'm told the food is delicious. Details are as always in the description of the video below and I'll also put out a community post where you can leave me a comment if you're planning to attend. And there are also some special guests who already indicated they'd show up so it should be quite the interesting evening with lots of rocket talk, drinks and well steak and seafood. So come and meet me, I want to get to know as many of you as possible. And as always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship updates. Especially in Boca Chica, news are coming in on an hourly basis right now. Loads of testing in preparation for Starship serial number one and loads of progress. Test tanks, test tanks and more test tanks. In this picture you can see freshly delivered nose caps. That is the centerpiece all the way on top of a nose cone. I'm counting three. How many more will SpaceX build? With the recent header tank test done and the nose cone looking rather worked out, SpaceX has lots of good news regarding the progress. There's still no news on how much pressure the header tank was able to take, but it's safe to say that the smaller tanks are the easier thing to get right and it shouldn't be a big holdup, even if this version did not do the trick of reaching the safety margin needed for operations. As seen on the last episode, that's not the only tank being built and tested right now though. Another one of those 9 meter full size tanks has been built lately. Nomad from NASA Spaceflight took a very nice picture for comparison. Here you can see the old nose section for Mark 1 still sitting on the ring wall to the left and in direct comparison the latest 9 meter test tank for serial number 1. You don't have to be an expert to see the differences here. The build quality made a huge leap forward in the last few months which fills me with quite some confidence regarding that first flight. Serial number 1 will be a whole different story compared to Mark 1. If we take a look again at the manufacturing process of that test tank, it becomes apparent why it looks so much better. Precision. The thin ring you can see circling the tank in this picture is an alignment ring, used to precisely align the rings for welding. We never saw anything like this on Mark 1. They just put rings on top of each other, basically dropping them onto the last ring and welding them in place. This time it's all about making it count. The public is watching and SpaceX is clearly changing behavior. This test tank was finished on the last weekend and moved to the launch site for testing on Monday. The process is routine by now. Build domes, stack them and weld them on a jig. Put jig on roll lift, move to launch site and make it blow, right? You know what's the most exciting part about this footage though? It's that it's not exciting. Nothing happened. No blow. No white vapor, no imploded tank. When SpaceX tested tank number 2, it held its pressure. According to Elon, it did it pretty well too. The 9 meter test tank made it up to 7.5 bar at room temperature before only a small leak occurred at the weld doubler. What Elon means with the weld doubler is this small segment here. It's not a super thin ring segment. It's a band covering the initial weld between the two main ring segments in the middle. It's used to cover the weld and make it stronger. Musk stated that workers would repair the leak and continue testing. This time with cryogenic nitrogen though. What's important about this is that stainless steel effectively doubles in strength when at cryogenic temperatures. It's weakest when at room temperature and stronger when heated or cooled. One of the main reasons why SpaceX went with stainless steel in the first place. Then on Tuesday came the big night for test tank number 2. The leak was fixed and the cryogenic fuel was ready. SpaceX workers began pressurizing the tank with liquid nitrogen. You can see the ice form on the outside of the tank here. Awesome footage by Boca Chica Gal again, invaluable work. Show her some love in the comments if you see it the same way. So this was an overpressure test again. Meaning SpaceX wanted it to blow and it did. 
In a pretty spectacular explosion, the tank said goodbye. It didn't take Musk long though to respond on Twitter and give out some numbers. 8.5 bar. That's 1.4 bar more than test tank number one got and most importantly, it's the magic number SpaceX wanted to reach before proceeding with the Starship serial number one construction. This is far more than what would be needed for a flight, which is 6 bar. This is it. We're done with bulkhead and tank testing. Let the stacking commence. As Musk said again as well, the welds are the most critical part here. He is confident that SpaceX now is ready for the real deal. Musk said that two domes for serial number one are already almost finished. Also, Mary was able to spot another nose cone. Is this for serial number one already as well? We're very, very close now to the actual stacking process. Two months left on Elon's timeline for that first flight. And another very good sign is stacking itself, right? Here you go. Recently stacked rings at the shipyard have now been moved into one of the larger onion tents for further processing. These new rings have only one weld where they're closed. Much less weak spots than on Mark 1 and much smoother when it comes to looks. No more dents this time. Musk even stated that this one vertical weld on the rings will be covered by a raceway and fuel lines running along the outside of the Starship. So in theory, we should only see horizontal welds on the hull this time. SpaceX is also continuing to flesh out the infrastructure. The new windbreaker is growing larger and larger and the second large onion tent is almost done now. Not long anymore and the facility will effectively have doubled the construction capacity in only about 6 weeks. According to Elon Musk, SpaceX seems very very close to commencing with the construction of serial number 1. And if you've watched my episodes, you already know that we might even see a serial number 2 in a parallel construction effort. And I really hope that this will start soon because I want to see Starship prototypes when I go to Boca Chica right after my trip to the Cape in early March. NASA Artemis possibly delayed. Now this next one is a direct follow up to my last episode where I gave you an update on the SLS core stage. There has been some significant changes on the matter that I want you to know. Artemis might be delayed and a commercial lunar lander might be off the table altogether. On Friday, January 24th, in direct follow-up to the presentation of the SLS core stage on the test stand, the House Committee on Science, Space and Technology released their latest NASA authorization bill. This bill had some very interesting news regarding NASA's future when it comes to the Artemis program and cooperation with commercial partners. First of all, the bill states that a moon landing should not be attempted in 2024, but instead in 2028. This is the original plan NASA had before President Trump announced his initiative to get us there by 2024. This would also mean that we'd have to wait another 8 years and possibly 2 more presidents. So basically, SLS and a crewed Orion flight have been moved into the far distance with this bill. Furthermore though, the bill also states that NASA should not focus on a manned moon base anymore and instead use the moon landing as a step towards Mars, excluding a lunar base. The House Committee believes that a lunar base and all the technology involved, including harvesting ice on the lunar surface to create oxygen and propellant, are not necessary for the task of getting humans to the Martian surface and this essentially is correct. This does mean though that the moon landing in 2028 would only be that. A landing and a short term science mission possibly lasting not longer than a few days. This will not teach us how to sustain a base outside of Earth. It will not teach us how to deal with strong radiation and microgravity for a prolonged time and most importantly at a much closer distance to our homeworld. All very much needed for a Mars base. This in return also means that the proposed commercial lunar payload service contracts involving several private space companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin would not be needed anymore, as they were supposed to get supplies to the lunar surface for a longer stay and subsequently a permanent base. NASA's main contractor for the Artemis program, Boeing, seems to have secured a spot in advance though. The bill states that a government-funded lunar lander should be used for the 2028 moon landing. According to the proposal, the lander should be fully integrated and capable of being launched on the SLS exploration upper stage. An advanced version of the SLS upper stage capable of launching an Orion capsule and a heavy payload towards the moon. Now here comes the twist. Last year, several commercial companies proposed a lunar lander to NASA to be used in a cost-saving effort for the Artemis program. The only fully integrated lander capable of launching on the exploration upper stage of SLS was, guess it, 
the one proposed by Boeing. So it seems that this bill kicks out all commercial space companies except for Boeing. The Commercial Spaceflight Federation, an organization that advocates for the commercial space industry, has already criticized the House Authorization Bill and will have to see what future talks bring. If the bill is not changed and passes the committee and the House, this would negate NASA's efforts in the recent past to get commercial partners involved and on board to create a thriving space-based economy. Companies like SpaceX will never pursue the effort of building a large, fully integrated lander for only one, maybe two missions to the moon. Now to set this straight again, what about it is not a political channel. This channel is about space and science. On my last episode, understandably, I got tons of comments about SLS and NASA that were of political nature. I do fully understand the nature of the subject and I agree on quite a few of the points you made, but please keep it civil in the comments. Thank you very much. These are some profound changes that will, if passed, change NASA's course yet again. Even a Mars Gateway is involved in a highly elliptical lunar orbit and the Lunar Gateway seems to be gone even before it was made. Having a solid plan for a long-term project is essential for its success and to be able to make that long-term plan you need as much knowledge and information as possible even before the plan is made. And if you want to be better at planning than the big guys, why not check out my sponsor for some help? Have you ever tried to learn about a topic and lost it at some point because it became too difficult to understand? Brilliant is the perfect place to widen your understanding of the world that surrounds you. It provides an accessible way for you to be able to understand some of the most essential subjects. By taking a step-by-step -step approach and a flexible entry point for different knowledge levels, Brilliant is unique when it comes to learning solutions. Brilliant specializes in bringing you closer to subjects like math fundamentals, classical mechanics or gravitational physics in a fun and interactive way. Studying for hours in classrooms might just not be the perfect way anymore. Brilliant's whole library of content can be accessed as an app on your phone when you're out and about and it gets regular updates and new courses on a daily basis. To break with old traditions and at the same time support What About It, go to brilliant.org slash whataboutit and sign up to get access to over 60 interactive courses for free. And if you choose to get the premium subscription, the first 200 to join up through the link will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. So change your ways of learning with Brilliant, links in the description. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It? When will the stacking start and would it be better to research a lunar base before going to Mars? As always, tell me in the comments. One more month, one more, until I go to the Cape and see CRS-20 and until I go to Boca Chica to check out the latest progress on the Starship. But what does this have to do with Patreon? Do you know who's going to accompany me on the trip? two of my patrons, and one of them is even gonna celebrate his birthday in Boca Chica. That is the level at which they are involved in this project. They make it all possible in the first place, so show some love in the comments and maybe even consider becoming one yourself. And as always, there are new members on the team. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Garrett Venema, Jason Hull, William Sposh, Frank Allen and many more. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? And now would be the appropriate time to hit the like button, subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button to actually receive a notification when I do my uploads. It's a version of support that doesn't cost a penny and it does help me to produce more and better content. And if you do want to spend your money, consider becoming a patron and get insights into the production of What About It? and chat with me on the Discord. Or you could buy yourself a new shirt on our merchandise store and look like me. There are plenty original designs available in good quality for a low price made by a space nerd for other space nerds. It all helps me to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. That's 1.4 bar. 1.4 bar. <laughs> right. <laughs> Bulkhead and test. Tanking. Test tanking. <laughs> I want you to know. <laughs> want you to know. <laughs>